Alrighty, everybody, much anticipated Vassal World Cup starting now. Or I, I guess, yeah, the games can start whenever. We've got the pod review today. I am joined by a uh, longtime friend of the channel, Taserface. We're going to do some pod reviews today. Going to do our predictions of who we think is going to make it out of each pod. Um, talk about the list, talk about um, some things that could happen in the games, that kind of thing. It's going to be kind of a long one, so strap in. Um, but I am excited. This is such a fun time of year for Armada. The Vassal World Cup is such an amazing event, so I, I can't wait to get started. Uh, but first off, Michael, good afternoon. How's it going? Not too bad. I'm excited for this. It was exciting to just see everything released kind of in that slow drip and then all at once kind of mm -hmm. at the end where we just got all all the lists to look through. Yeah, it, uh, it it's such a shame, too, because I think a lot of people, maybe not Europeans, it may have been later in their day, but I think for a lot of the U.S., it was during work hours, and so I think a lot of us were maybe shirking a few duties or whatever just to peek at the pods and get some discussion going. Yep, uh, yep. But I don't want to waste too much time. Let's hop in with pod redemption here. So for each of the pods, uh, I'll go through each list just very briefly. I'm not going to read out every upgrade or something. Sorry for those of you who are just listening and not watching. But they're going to be up on the screen here. Um, I think going through making our decision process, uh, at least for me, my criteria are going to be you know, how good do I think the list is, how does it match up against other lists in the pod, and then if I, if I know the players, you know, how much will, do I think player skill will factor into that. But it's mainly going to be how do they match up against each other. And as a reminder, two lists making it out of each pod. Um, each pod is four players. So this first one here, uh, this we're starting with a very interesting pod. This is, uh, I believe, Australia and then one or two people from the U.S. who are just happy to play at night or early in the morning. We've got... Um, Raikian CR90 spam, which this was the first pod that Biggs revealed. This is a hilarious list to start with from LTD. We've got Relent 26. This is uh, Sloan, um, German Sloan, Coward Sloan, however you want to say it. Um, with a few more updates to it, you've got like Darth Vader TIE Defender in there, but generally likes to run away and pick its fights. Um, Andrew B. running four Peltas and a Ven 1 with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, I've got some thoughts on that that we can get to. And then Dreadlord Loki running Martuk on a Providence with three hard cells and some Tri-Fighters. Um, so, Michael, first thoughts on this pod? Uh, first thoughts, um, the, <laughs> the Pelta spam is super interesting and... Something that I'm kind of like still picking apart in my brain, like where where efficiencies were. I think he pretty much nailed it. Mm -hmm. Like between uh, expert shield techs and evade, long the the peltas are gonna truck off damage, and like you basically got three tokens that are gonna reduce at minimum two damage if you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna be fun. It, it's gonna be real interesting. Yes, I think a lot of it's gonna come down to how he flies it. I like the um, double slicer tools with engine techs. Uh, that's a neat wrinkle that could really mess some people up. My only, I don't want to say gripe, but I have recently in my local meta played against someone running Quad Pelta with a Venator, but they ran Lumi instead of Obi-Wan. And I think that's where this list could kind of struggle is the Peltas with Expert Shield Techs and the Evades are very good against squads, but without Lumi constantly bringing the other token back, you could get overwhelmed by squads. Um, the Venator is obviously tanky with Tranquility. It's got the um, Orton's pods as well, which is always nice. Uh, so I think very competitive list. There are just some squads hanging out up here in this Sloan list that I might be a little concerned about. Definitely. Yeah, the, what is that, four defenders? Yeah, the four tie defenders are going to um, have some fun with the Peltas, and uh, Sloan itself is going to have fun eating through the defense tokens. When you don't have Luminar there to be that natural counter to Sloan. I'm with you. Lumi maybe is better in this list, but it's still, like, it, it looks really fun. It, it intensify firepower powering uh, reactive gunnery on those two red dice mm -hmm. shots whenever they feel like it's safe to, you know, flip a token and shoot back. It's going to be a very, like, constant paper cuts just everywhere. Yep, I agree. I think uh, this list matches up well against the other two against Loki's Martuk and against um, LTD's Corvette spam. I think mm -hmm. 
And I think the slow-mo is the only one that scares it. So I think it's in a good spot there. I do want to talk about the, uh, the elephant in the room here. Uh, this is, is this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven CR90As, all with TRCs and Riken. Um, those could get annoying pretty fast. Oh, yeah. Talk about paper cuts. Like, just, yeah. here's, here's two damage, here's two damage, here's two damage, here's two damage, mm -hmm. here's two damage. Yeah, like, seven times in a row. Yep. Or, uh, or you were hoping to run away with one of your larger ships. I'm just going to sit right in front of you. You can kill me. I'm still going to be here, and I'm going to deal three or four damage to you and ram you. Yeah. So that's, and I'm going to keep you in place long enough for the rest of my buddies to catch up. Uh-huh, yeah. I think the toilet bowl potential here is out of control, or even just the, I, I see your large ship, like the Venator or the Providence here. I'm just going to fly all of my CR90s right at you and see what you do about it. Yeah. The one yeah. problem I could see LTT running into here is um, being able to win big. That's not as important in pod phase, and maybe that's something I should address here up front. Normally, throughout the history of the Vassal World Cup, in pod phase, as long as you are able to go 3-0 and or 2-1 and with a big, bit, or a big win and a small loss, you can normally get out. Um, you don't have to win super big until you get to Swiss, so... Uh, I think in pod phase, this is a great list because he's going to lose a few CR90s every game, but that's just so many rams and so many so much consistent damage that he still has a good chance to win the games, which is the more important part in pod phase. Oh, agreed. If you can go 3-0, and oh, you're pretty much set in pod phase. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll move on here. My predictions for this group, I think this is close. I really like the CR90 spam, so I'm predicting... LTD and Relent 26. However, I would not be surprised if Andrew B makes it out because this, I think, is the dark horse of this particular pod. Of If things go well, I could absolutely see the Obi Wan list moving on. And if things don't go so well, like if it really struggles against Sloan and gets a bad loss, uh, it gets a little shaky. How about you? Uh, I think Relent probably is the, the surefire bet to either be first or second and come out of the pod, mm -hmm. uh, just because nobody else really has squads or ways to deal with them uh, yeah. universally. Um, I, I know Loki's got them and he's got the RHDs, but not quite enough. After that, it's really going to come down to roles. So, like, uh, we didn't really touch on Loki's list, but Mark took with, Bar like, battle refits. You can be throwing five red dice and he's got to reroll and intensify. Like, you can really stack up damage quick if you roll hot and, and, you know, with something like LTD's list in particular, if you lose a couple of activations early enough, then all of a sudden you're not throwing enough paper cuts for it to matter. And mm -hmm. uh, things can things can snowball quick. And the same goes with, like, the Peltas. If Obi-Wan goes early enough, it, it, can, it can spell trouble. So other than Relent, I don't know who would come out. I guess LTD, just because I've seen enough of their games that, I know that they know what they're doing in the secret 90s, and uh, Riken is just a pain in the butt. Still mm -hmm. is. Always has been. Yep. I agree. All right. And Next. I think they've, oh, go they've got bid, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Seven, seven is the biggest, yes. Yeah. So being able to control the game a little bit, just going into that part of the the setup will be, will be yeah. helpful for all. As know. long as LTD has good objectives, the ability to look at any of these other lists and say, okay, I'm going second, and I'm going to get to go with the last three or four ships every round, that's huge. Yep. Um, next pod, though, we've got Dodana's Pride. Um, this is a North American pod. It is, I believe, East Coast slash Midwest. So we've got the Red Scourge running Hawk 134. Um to my chagrin. There's quite a few Hawk 134s in this World Cup. Um, you get Truthy running a Starhawk, but it's a very different take with Radis and Mon Karen, and then a couple of transports. Um, you have to forgive me on the name here. Envy Specialist, I believe, 86, uh, running Freedom Bot uh, set six activations, uh, which is far and away the most in this group. And then uh, Fox running, you guessed it, Count Dooku, uh, in what it appears to be a very similar, if not the same, list he was running in the Texas tournaments. I'm not 100% sure on that, but very same bones to that list. So thoughts on this pod? Um, Fox having 10 squads is going to be big for, for him to be able to 
just put down the Gazzotti, put down 10 squads, and have almost everything from your opponents down and on the board, uh, mm-hmm. especially in this group. Um, Truthy's uh, double big Radis drop is going to be real interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I really like it. It, it. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's going to punch you in the face, and if you punch harder, you'll win. Uh, but I don't know how often people are going to punch harder, because heavy ions are are really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, my initial thoughts are that uh, Truthy has to just be salivating at the prospect of Hawk 134. I think yeah. that's a matchup he'll love as long as the 134 squads don't just roll stupid hot and really start to wear through his shields. I think the ability to park your Starhawk in front of the opposing Starhawk and then drop the Star Cruiser in the side or the rear with highs, I think can tear that thing apart. Um, and then Fox, I think, I don't know how much experience everyone in this tournament has with their lists, but I do know that Fox has a ton of experience with this. And um, you can theory craft for Dooku all you want, but when those raid tokens start hitting the table, you know, it can it can get a little tough. I think you're absolutely right. The deployment advantage that Fox has is really, really big um, and will be relevant in a lot of the matchups. I, he has, though, expressed some concerns about Starhawks um, in, in the various Discord channels. Um, so I, I am interested to see, you know, if his worries come to fruition at all. I don't know if he's worried about being able to kill them or just doesn't like the matchup. I'm not sure, but I'm interested to see what he does. Yeah, I am too. Um, uh, specifically, Truth is, is going to be interesting because he'll have the squads there to sort of give themselves a Radis bubble mm-hmm. where the, the Liberty can't go. Um, and then um, against the 134, I think his squads win out. I think Man, so that's too. That's going to be tough. The, the YT 2400s can hit like like bricks. And if they can take out three vultures on that first, you know, assault, ugh, that's mm-hmm. not going to be good. Um, that said, like you, well, actually, like you said, Dooku is a a different beast that you've got to be ready for. Uh, and I imagine as Red Skurg plays their their matchup with them, uh, they're going to be wishing they had a resupply somewhere mm-hmm. um, to be able to just pass out tokens and yeah. get a few things off you in there. There's no resupply, no comms net. So it's going to be interesting. Um, the other, the other thing, the point I will give the Hawk One Thirty Four is they have bid on everyone, and we all know how dangerous the Hawk One Thirty Four with bid is. So I'm interested to see what these other players pick as objectives, because the the Hawk's going to go second. It's almost certainly going to be um, advanced gunnery, fire lanes, and I always forget the name of the third one. Is it in, Intel Sweep or Sen- Sensor Net? Yeah, Sensor Net. So I'll be interested to see what people pick. But uh, what are your predictions for this pod? Uh, my predictions really come down to the people I have experience with, with Truthy and Fox. I played them both. They're both very good. Um, and they both have good lists. I don't see any super super holes in either of their lists, so I expect them to have good results and probably pull it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the caveat, as always, with TF is, like, if you're rolling those black dice and they're coming up doubles, like... That could be a bad day real quick. Yes, I agree. The TF, I should also mention, I think that this has a pretty decent matchup against the Hawk 134, because that's six bodies yeah. to wait out activations, and um, the Hawk doesn't want to deal with repair raid a whole lot, and if you start getting those uh, getting those doubles to get through, it could be a problem. But my, yep. uh, my predictions echo yours. Again, I think it comes down to the people I know, and their lists are good. I've got Truthy and Fox going through as well, but I think it'll be a fun group to watch. Um, Agreed. Next, we've got Paragon, which, uh, Biggs, come on. I'm the only person to play Paragon, the title, competitively in I don't know how long, and you didn't put me in the Paragon group. I don't get it. It's even, it's a Midwest slash East Coast group, so I'm a little salty. But we've got uh, Formender here with uh, Plo Koon. I think this is a list that he's run quite a bit. Um, we've got Scipio with uh, Sato on a command cruiser. Uh, Geek 19 with the vibe check. Um, Ven 1, Acclimator 1, Charger, Pelta, and four aces. 
And then Ryan Becker with the SSD Onager, the first of many SSDs that we're going to see. Um, so I think th this is the list I'm interested in talking about first here, the SSD Onager list. Okay, what are your thoughts? Uh, my, my thoughts are we haven't seen a lot of a SSDs competitively uh, recently in any major tournaments that I'm aware of. There was one in, down in Texas that did okay, but I have not seen the command prototype much at all, much less with onagers. And there are multiple SSD onager lists in this tournament. So um, I don't know if this is popping up somewhere that I'm not seeing or people have just all come to this same conclusion, but I think that it could be very dangerous against the right lists of the SSD is just this big stupid behemoth that just will sit in front of you and uh, get in your way and, and shoot out that big front arc uh, while the onager shoots straight through it. So I, I am interested to see how Ryan and the other people playing this list end up playing it. Like, do you go speed zero with the onager in the corner and kind of, you know, cross your own T and shoot through it? Or, or how do you go? But uh, it's very interesting. Like I said, we haven't seen a lot of it recently. So it's kind of exciting to see the SSD out and again. Uh, I think that's absolutely what you do. Um, ECMs on that Venator are going to be clutch in that matchup. Um, I, I really like that it's got boarding troopers on it. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Ryan's a big, big fan of boarding troopers, and yes. the SSD <laughs> can reach out and board just about anything if you're not being careful and paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, a little surprised that Observator isn't anywhere to just choke out people on that SSD for rerolls as needed, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, take evasive action makes complete sense and leading shots because you don't have observator makes complete sense. So yeah, I really mm -hmm. like it. I think uh, I, I'm excited to see how it does. I think that SSD as like perma obstruction for the monitor is going to be great. Uh, and in a 2D uh, digital format, it's going to be nice and easy to keep your you know ignition token right where you want it. Whereas like in real life, it's, it would be much harder to just like get it at the exact right point where it needs to be underneath the SSD, maybe, if it needs to be there. And... Yep. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Anything else stand out to you in the, in the pod? Anyone else you want to uh, Geek's list reminds me of the dumpster fire list, where everything is just kind of barely upgraded. Uh, and to that end, I really like it. Uh, I'm a big fan of Ahsoka Tano, both the officer and the, the fighter, so mm -hmm. I like to see the fighter out there, because I feel like the officer tends to overshadow her, but... Um, yeah, other than that, everything feels super straightforward. That the Sato list doesn't really want to run in, but it can. It's with engine techs and uh, QBTs to be able to run in at speed one, but still be doing speed two. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I, I love Plocoon. Plocoon was the first one, uh, first commander that I fell in love with from the new factions. And I haven't quite been able to make it work, so I'm really interested if Warren can make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The. Um... The Sato list is interesting to me because this is one of the only times I've seen Sato with, without a ship that really wants the black dice. Um, normally you're seeing Sato trying to get APTs to go off at long um, or something like that. So this will be interesting to see a list that doesn't have any black crit effects. Um, he may not take the black dice every time. There may be times where he's going to take double blue or something and, and fish. Um, so I'll yeah, be I, was, uh, I was a little surprised that 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 one Corvette is a Corvette B. I thought it would be a Corvette A with Dodonis Pride on it. Mm -hmm. um, that seems kind of like the, the generic Sato Corvette to go with after you put Jaina's Light on one, but yeah. we'll see. Yep, it'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's also an interesting inclusion of Hera X-Wing with no other X-Wings. Um, yes. I, I, I don't really know what his plan is there, but um, we shall find out. So, oh, it's with the the thirteen hundreds getting adept, don't they? Yeah, they they They're do. Escort. I just okay. I don't know. They, they seem as Sato. I feel like you want to project your fighters forward to go give yourself things to get the Sato off of, and so the thirteen hundreds being speed two, in what appears to be a relatively defensive squad ball. I, I, I maybe maybe he's expecting people to come into him where he can then just push his fighters up a little bit and they can screen and also be there for Sato. I'm not sure. That's fair. Um, 
But my predictions for this particular pod, um, I've got to give one to Becker. Uh, I think, you know, I know he's a good player. Um, he's a decent friend of mine in, in the scene here, and I have to believe that he's been practicing this and will make good use out of shooting through the SSD. Um, I think he's got a good matchup against the Sato list and, and against Plo Koon, as long as the Plo Koon squads don't tear him up too early. Um, and then the other spot, I think, is a toss-up for me between both Republic lists, but I think I have to give it to Geek on, just because I know Geek is such a good player, and he's got the Mercy mission, which will be clutch, I feel like, in a lot of these matchups, and it just seems like a pretty well-balanced list. You picked mine, too. Mercy mission was uh, the the tiebreaker for me between the two Republic lists. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite upgrades of the game, and uh, that SSD just looks mean. Hmm. It's not it's the command prototype, and it's not Ravager, but like it still looks mean. And so, yeah, yep. I, I think they probably both get out. Yep. So far, I think we are picking the same for everything. So we'll see when that starts to diverge. On to Pod Stronghold here, which Stronghold is one of the European pods. Um, we've got Martuk at the top here with double recusant and uh, was it eleven squads, uh, all for under a. It's 103 points. You get 11 squads. How nice. We have, uh, this is going to be a tough one, Restas Lassie, Lackey. I don't want to speculate too much, but this is um, Sloan on an Imp 2 with uh, Quasar Gazanti and then the full mess of squads. Um, Spike here with the first of, I believe, two um, all Pelta Yalaran lists uh, with the full 134. And then James Morgan here with Honiger, Quasar with Sloan, and Raider. So kind of a, a Sloaniger build with full complement of squads. Uh, anything stand out to you right away? Uh, the first Sloan list with the ISD2 has 10 squads. Similar to Fox, I think that's going to play out well, especially versus those two recusants. Um, I'm curious to see how Saska does with the T-Series tactical droids. I haven't been able to make them work. Mm. super great um so here's to you like i really hope it works nova defiant's gonna help out a lot there um sloniger sloniger i i admire spike with the peltas because i really want to make it work uh i've not been able to try it yet but those medical frigates being able to push four squads with the owner is super cool and each you know pelta being able to heal up a squad to health each time is mm -hmm. super great so Yep. A, th a couple things that stood out to me. Um, all, right away, I was like, oh, Sloniger, like, super solid list. But Sloan is on the Quasar, and the Raider is naked besides Corvus. Um, so th that, to me, con just concerns me a little bit. That's a 101-point Quasar um, with your commander on it, the whole thing that kind of makes your list tick. So I'd be a little scared there. I don't really understand taking... Corvus and not putting Sloan on it. Um, so I'll be interested to see that. And then I, I am also interested, like you said, in this Yalaran Pelta spam list. I think the Pelta is arguably the most efficient ship in the game. And like you said, the things it can do with Yalaran are great. It's also got fighter coordination team on all of them, so he can move those arcs up and keep them in the fight. The only thing I worry about in this particular pod is everyone's running over 100 points of squads. And the fact that Yalarn is at best going to be able to activate uh, four in one go means he's not going to have as much of an alpha as everyone else is. And so that could end up being a problem of you know, he loses a few squads before he's able to punch back. Flip side of that is the arcs are so tanky and he's got Yalarn to heal them that it may not matter. Agreed. Uh, but my predictions then for this one, I went with... Um, Resta Slassy, Lackey, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I just think the classic Sloan is very, very good, and I think his list matches up, or their list, I should say, matches up very well in this pod. Um, it's balanced. It's got anti-ship threats. It's got anti-squad threats. I think it's very good. And then I gave the other spot to Spike um, with the Pelta Spam. I was going to give it to uh, James Morgan with uh, Sloniger here, but I'm just too concerned about Sloan being on the Quasar. So I'm giving the edge to Spike. I think it can do well. We have our first divergence. I'm going to give it to the, the two Sloan players. I think Sloan on the Quasar is worry, like worrisome against 
other onagers, but without that, um, they've got the squads and the deployments to get it down in a safe spot. And uh, I, I think they'll be able to, to make it work and plow through stuff. The, the one, like, one thing making me want to go back to Spike beyond just, like, really loving the list, uh, they've got bid on everybody. Mm-hmm. So Spike is going to get choice against everyone, and uh, who knows what they got tucked up their sleeve. Maybe they've got a trick here or there where you've got to dive in at those arcs and then they get to counter alpha. Yeah. This would be one of the rare lists where I would not be surprised to see, uh, I think it's Jamming Barrier, the yellow. Because um, those Peltas don't mind if they lose a die while attacking, as long as those uh, they, they stay alive to be able to push the squads. Oh. So, it'd be interesting. But all right, our first divergence. We move on to Pod Insidious. Insidious, where is this? This is our first West Coast pod, West Coast US. We've got HM with uh, Grievous, that's interesting, um, with, what was that, four ships and eight squads. We've got Maturin with Yalarin, uh, Peltas, and Navuda B. We've got Machi, Mackie, um, with uh, Hawk 134. Um, if you're going to do Hawk 134, just call it Hawk 134. Don't call it Starhawk Rogues 134. You're not fooling anybody. And then Broba Fett, which I think this is exciting. I don't know how much he's been running Republic, but um, I have not seen him run Republic. So Yalaren with double Peltas and the full complement of squads. Um, I'll say right off the bat, I... I'm excited. I think Broba Fett is such a good player, particularly such a good squadron player. So I am excited to see what he does with Yalaren. I think this is a very classic, um, you know, solid list. He's got more of an offensive acclimator there with the acclimator two with implacable and racks. Um, so not leaning in the Navuda B direction, but more of like an offensive weapon, which I think is very cool. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, implacable is going to make sure that. Um whatever squad you need to keep alive stays alive long enough for you to learn to heal it up um, between it and Axe. I don't think there's any way to kill Anakin Skywalker. I could be wrong, but mm-hmm. I, I don't think there is. And again, Ahsoka with fighter coordination teams is kind of my my uh, white whale. I've been trying to figure it out, a list that, that works. Mm-hmm. My uh, general concern with an Acclimator is it's a Quasar with a uh, Salvo token. Yeah. But with Thermal Shields on the Acclimator 2, it becomes a uh, tanky enough, and then with Clone Captain Silver, being able to kind of slow roll and then sprint away when you need to really does help. So, um, yeah, I'm really interested to see that one on the table. Yep. I think it, it also, I think, matches up pretty well against a lot of these lists. Um, a lot of squads, again, in this in this pod here. Um, the, the Hawk 134 here, I feel like, is in an interesting spot. So I think that it's going to have a tough time with the squadrons of Broba Fett, but I don't really see how Broba Fett kills the Hawk. And so it may only you know, lose 7-4 at worst. We'll see. Interestingly, though, this Hawk 134 list does not have bid. Um, it's at a flat 400. I don't know what Broba's bid is. I've not done the math because it's not posted here. But it's I'll at a... Here, um, keep, keep talking all yeah, that. every all the other lists in the pod are at 400, which is interesting. So either Broba is going to have bid on everyone, or everyone's going to be rolling blue dice to start the game. Um, but uh, the, if my quick math is correct, he's got an eight point bid. Okay, so yeah, he's he's got choice against everything, which I think is going to be very important against the Hawk 134 for sure. Um, less so against the other lists, but uh, that that could. I've never seen a, a Hawk 134 build recently go without a bid, um, so I'll be interested to see how that ends up going. How do you feel about the Hawk basically getting first every single time? I, I As the Hawk player, I don't think I feel great, because it's going to be tough to, f- to force engagement by yourself, like to get in there and make stuff happen because you're so slow, and you don't really activate all that many squads at a time, so your big hit going first is not that big. It's a good squad ball, and it's a very balanced squad ball, but you're activating at, at most, what, four with the Hawk? Um, everything yeah. else would be activating three at best. So, uh, I don't know. You, it, it definitely becomes a different matchup where you can't just 
move into the front of the hawk, shoot the hawk, and go away because the hawk's going to get to go first. But by that same token, like I said, you're you're having to force the issue as the hawk player, which can be kind of in, uh, intimidating in a lot of games. Yep. Yeah, but LTT with that that red black dice on the Mark II is going to really help with their squads. Um, mm -hmm. And lack of strategic has me not concerned, but just curious what their objectives are. Probably like contested outpost, doom station, stuff like that, where mm -hmm. um, you got to move the hawk off a spot. But um, yeah, um, I'm curious because those uh, that squad ball is not nice. Yeah, two twenty four hundreds, green, gold, Shara, Lando, Katsu, Dutch, with Adar backing them up. So it's like there's nine of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that's particularly nice. if Dutch can turn off two things a turn. That gets really ugly. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it'll be interesting to see how that ends up going. Uh, my predictions for this particular pod: I've got Broba, uh, as people could probably gather from how much we've talked about it, and then I do, much to my chagrin, think that the Hawk will probably make it through. Um, I think it matches up pretty well against the the other Yularen list here, uh, the one with five ships, uh, just because it lacks some squad power that Broba has in his, and then I think it does pretty well into the Greedus list. Um, not that I think any of the wins will be super big for the Starhawk, but I, I think it, it should do well against the other lists, including Broba. See, I've got the two Republic lists because uh, Maturin's got my favorite little upgrade Mercy mission. Yep. And I yep. think that's gonna be gonna be the the thing that seals the deal in enough of their games. Uh, and the armed cruiser on the consular, as opposed to um, oh, it, that's the red dice one, right? Not the blue dice one. No, it is one. it is the blue dice one. Oh, even better. So it's gonna have the blue dice to um, help with those squads and having two of them to overlap flak. Uh, along with the Pelta Transports that have blue-black, I think. Um, their flak is going to help out their squads quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, I've got Maturin and Broba making it through. Alrighty. On to the next. We've got Raykill, which this is the weird pod of, I believe, two Americans and two Europeans, just how everything shook out. Um, so hopefully they can get all their games scheduled. It should be a good pod here, though. We've got Sloniger with four activations. Uh, we've got and that's coming from Diradan. We've got Xantos with, uh, this is a Dooku list, four ship Dooku with four vultures as well. Um, we've got Marathi Ormand um, with a Luminara Venator list, uh, three ship with a bunch of squads. And then Severus Snape with Agate on, a, on Mon Karen with a couple CR90s and 100 points of squads. Um, this, to me, seems like a very balanced group. Um, everyone's got um, at least some squads. Everyone's got some ship firepower. Um, you have, um, I think I referred to it as one of the more honest pods, and then you pointed out that Sloniger is in here, so I don't know how honest it can actually be. Um, and then we've got uh, someone who is not Fox Omega running Dooku, which I'm very intrigued by. Yeah. I... I really like all of the lists. Uh, I like the um, the Sloniger list. I would have cut one tie to be at eight squads and beefed up the Inuniger a little bit. Maybe put, um, I don't know, something for rerolls on there. Because uh, since her team ordinance experts doesn't seem like enough rerolls to me, maybe you mess around and lose Darth Vader tie defender. But like, it's still a Sloniger. You've got more than enough stuff to push squads it's it'll be interesting mm -hmm. um dooku's always always tough uh my personal favorite with when being like being dooku and trying to decide how you're going to deal with the opponent's squads is that teaks slicer tool transport yeah um, so it's it's got my vote i really like that thing um and then the the venator luminar list i really like uh, but i'm just partial to it so mm -hmm. that's a me thing yeah i think it um it should do well, obviously, against Sloniger, because Lumi just does great into her. Um, I think that Dooku could also be doing pretty well into Sloniger. Um, the flagship here has the Thermals and Sana Lore, so it's not really minding the Onager shots all that much. Um, interestingly, though, uh, the... Um, whatchamacallit? You've got the, the TI-99 here to give counter on the Vultures, uh, but... Only one reserve hanger, or excuse me, two reserve hangers. Never mind. Yeah. Um, 
Yep. Right. I agree. Right. That that teak slicer tools is is pretty nasty. I think that that could be trouble for Sloan. Of you're getting nav. I mean, you're getting squad raided, and here comes slicer tools coming after your quasar. Yeah, uh, grit should help with squad raid, uh, mm -hmm. but the the slicer tools is where you seal the deal, and just kind of shut everything down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. This will be a fun pod to watch. I don't even know who I like out of this. Yeah, I was gonna say, who do you have? Um. Uh, I'll go with Luminara just because Mercy Mission's there. It's my baby. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we have bid on everybody. 392? Uh, I believe yeah, they so. Got, they got bid on everybody, so yeah, I'll go with Luminara. Um, that a gate star cruiser is mean. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, that's one of my sleeper ones of coming out of yeah. this group. So it's going to struggle against um, against that flagship Munificent. Uh, yes. With with thermals being able to get rid of the blues and now all of a sudden highs doesn't happen. And, oh no, woe is me. Um, I'll, go, I'll go with Luminar and Dooku. I think we'll, we'll both come out. Alrighty. I've got, um, for this one, I've got Dooku as well, but I am going with uh, Agate there. It might just be, you know, the fact that I, I've run that particular ship quite a bit, but um, I think... You know, if if it gets in range and gets a good one to two shots off, as long as it can last that long, it, it can absolutely delete some of these bigger ships, um, or even one of the smalls like that. Pelta could get one shot, so uh, yeah, that's what I'm going true. with. But I think it should be a close group, one of one of the closer groups that we have. I think. Uh, moving on to the Liberty group, this is uh, is this West Coast here or is this East Coast? This is East Coast. Uh, we've got Backseat Admiral with Kraken. This is the first Kraken we've seen so far with MC-30. Uh, looks like five ship, including a CRNDB with Dodonna's Pride. Um, Horngrim with um, Martuk uh, is the five ship with some vultures. Fred2034 with uh, a Ven Imperial Venator, which is always nice to see. And a Quasar Fire 2, which I think we will talk about. And then Louis Andre with um, quite possibly the most unique list in the whole tournament. It's definitely a contender for it. It's a Kuat, uh, a Vic One stacked to the gills, um, a Raider likewise stacked to the gills, a Gazanti, and then a very annoying squad ball. No, come on. Come on. So my my initial thoughts here are a lot of these are very interesting lists. Um, I, I am partial to Louis Andre's weirdness that he's created here. Um, as as we all know, he's a very very good player. Made the Vessel World Cup Finals last year and just barely lost. Um, so talent is not going to be a question. Um, you've just got a lot of interesting things going on. Uh, super aggressive Vic One and a Raider flagship that wants to get in there. Uh, I'm interested to see how he plays it. I mean, this is all close range stuff. Yeah, all the black dice. Uh, it's got two of my favorite things, Jurgerod and Captain Jonas. So mm -hmm. he's I'm definitely cheering for him. Um, I, I, he is such a talented player. I, I think he's going to end up making it work. But man, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree. He's very much bucking the, the trend of black dice ships not being super great right now. He's like, yeah, screw that, <laughs> going all in. I love Jonas in this, though. The ability to have the Kuat or the Vic saddle up to something, uh, and Jonas is there as well, that makes that massive punch hit so much harder when you can't brace or when you can't redirect away. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Jonas, and I think it's going to do great here. Yeah. I like the Kraken list, too. Mm-hmm. ICB, Dodonos Pride. Yeah, I like that. Um. I think there's one that's similar to this we'll, we'll cover later that uh, has uh, Rex in it mm -hmm. where uh, Raid gets on people and then those ICBs keep taking it off. But yeah, I like that Kraken list is fun too. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I think worth talking about as a 102 point Quasar Fire 2 with Mahdi. Um, again, fat Quasar, but you've got the thing. You talk about the white whale for you. This is one of my white whales of getting... Quasar Fire 2 with Ruthless to, to actually do some good work. And yeah. he'll, he'll have chances. I think everyone's got squads, so he'll have chances to make it work. 
I'm interested to see how it does. Yeah, I'm a little surprised at no two at ECM, but like yeah, particularly you on, can't have it's everything. A, it's the flagship, so it's a little scary. Yeah. Because uh, you're right, you know the MC30 saddles up against that, or any of Louis' big ships get there, it, it could spell disaster. Yeah. Yeah, that MC30 with H9s and Excel backs is just going to pop it. Yeah. Yeah. Just so fast. Uh, but my predictions, uh, obviously I've got to go with Louis Andre. Uh, it may, may be a bit hopeful cause the list is sort of weird, but I think it's, it's not bad in this particular pod. And I think Louis is just a good enough player to do it. So I'm predicting that. And I'm also predicting the Kraken list. I think it's very well balanced. I think it matches up well. Um, so that's what I, those are my two. Yep. I like those two. I will give, uh, the the plug though to uh martuk as well like that the the gunnery teams on the support destroyer recusant are going to be able to shoot a ship and then ltt a squad anywhere Mm -hmm. every single time and that's not going to be nothing and with six vulture squads getting pushed around by the transport and two gazantes like if martuk rolls not it's going to be a good day um and you can never tell when her those red dice are going to roll hot or not. So um, I, I think generically I'm with you, uh, backseat Admiral and Louis Andre, but uh, Horngrim, that that list definitely has potential, and I really like it. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, moving on to Pod Chimera. Uh, this is another European pod. We've got our second iteration of the Ramadi SSD with Onager. Uh, we've got Real Veers running Rebels, uh, running Riken with five ships and 132 squads. Uh, uh, let's see, Adrienne here running Lumi um, with uh, all the Republic ships being represented. And then Irish Mad Cat with Triple Muni with 69 points of squads. Um, I have heard that Riken is very popular in the German Polish meta. It seems like the top three commanders over there, to my knowledge, and the results I've seen have been Sloan, because of course, Luminara to counter Sloan, and Riken, likewise, also good against Sloan. Um, and so I I am sure that uh, Real Veers is really going to bring it here. Uh, obviously a former champion. Uh, I think that he's got a really, really good chance, and this is a very solid list. Um, mm-hmm. The CR90B is sneaky annoying there with the highs that are probably going to go off because you cannot deal with the CR90. No matter, you could throw 10,000 dice at it and it's still going to be there and it's probably going to strip through your shields. Um, so I like that a lot. Uh, and then uh, second version of this uh, Onager SSD list. Um, again, I, I think it's a very solid archetype. Uh, it's got the boarding troopers just like Ryan's version. So uh, this should be a very interesting pod. Yeah, I really like it. Um, I actually don't like the SSD as much in this list, at this uh, pod. Yes, I do agree with that. Yeah, just a little too much return firepower um, for it to to, to handle. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, I love Mad Cat's triple mutants. Yes. Those look great. Um, Luminara with one of everything looks awesome. I really like this. Uh, a little surprising at um, no thermals on the Act Two, no like thermals or ECMs. Yeah. On the Act Two, mm-hmm. but yeah, other than that. Yeah, yeah, that's be pretty solid. that'd be my biggest concern here. Is that is a ninety-five point pinata basically of each of these other lists have a lot of ways that they can kill that, and so it'd be interesting yeah. to see how long it lasts in those games. It's gonna hit decently hard if it gets there and he's got the ord pods since he's going squadless uh but it'll be interesting the thing that you mentioned about um the ssd not being as good in this list is i think it really struggles to find a target with veers i think he just dances around it uh i think this five act republic list just has a ton of firepower coming back and these munis all have thermals and salvo so uh, it could run into some issues there. Oh, for sure. Uh, but my oh, for pre- sure. my Go predictions ahead. for this, uh, it's got to be Veers for me. I don't think you accidentally become a Vassal World Cup champion. So I, I'm definitely picking Veers. 
and um, uh, my second one here I think is, is kind of a toss-up. I think the SSD list is very strong generically, but I think in this particular pod, I actually favor Irish Mad Cat as my second guy going through. Yeah, I do too. Um, Fears and Mad Cat. Uh, Adrian, the more I look at their list, I really want to pick it. There's there's little tweaks I would change to it, but yeah, I really want to pick it. Then pick it. Declare it. No, no, I won't do it. You can't make me. You All probably... right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mad Cat, Mad Cat and Veers out of this pod. Alrighty, on to the next, and this is your pod, Devastator. We've got uh, Sky Cake with Martuk, a Double Muni, Hard Cell Recusant, no squads. We've got your list, which we will skip over for now and talk about. I'll let you go through it. Um, we've got Gadarian, I believe, uh, with a pretty classic Akbar. Only three ships, but he's got some squads in there, and then. Rayleigh, I think, Rayleigh 42, with uh, some Acclimators, a Vic, a Charger, and some squads. So before we talk about anything else, walk me through your list here. All right. So um, it all started with me wanting to get board, Boarding Trooper Vader back in the list, and then I was like, oh, hey, Sunder's a thing. What if we just make everybody sad that they brought upgrades? Mm -hmm. uh, and kind of evolved from there. Ozzel helps um, keep my dials flexible to be able to either throw squads if I need to, or Nav, if I need to, Chimera is just super, super solid. Um, and then with Boarding Trooper Vader, you don't get Officer Vader, so got to have leading shots in there um, to yep. help control your dice. Uh, and it helps for squads, too, so that's always always nice to be able to take one of those blue dice if you blink out and reroll it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the the Onager itself, I'm excited to try out. I haven't haven't really got to try it out yet, but Intel Officer Sensor Team just seems really mean. Um, yes. And so uh, I'm 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 excited to get it on the table, see how it plays. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the uh, the Valen five bombers. It's such a mean squad ball. If your opponent doesn't have grit, it's just like, well, you're just stuck here dealing with 25 points of bomber hull while Valen hits you for three black over and over. Yeah, yeah, it's a mean little tar pit. Mm -hmm. I apologize for the cat in the background. That's all right. The other thing you have is that ISD2 can send those right after Skycake's ships because he's got no uh, no squads there. Um, same with uh, pretty light squad ball on this uh, this Lumi list down here. So uh, they should they should fare okay as a screen. Um, I I have been very vocal in various channels that the Onager test bed is an abomination purely because of its price. Uh, and I think the Onager Star Destroyer would see so much more play if the prices were more comparable because I think it, the Star Destroyer is a very solid ship. I, I like the LTTs on it, especially because you don't have like a second reroll um, weapons team there and you don't have Officer Vader. So um, I think that getting the LTTs in there is great and gives you a little extra squad plink damage if it comes up. And um, in general, I, I like the dice pool that the Onager Star Destroyer has. Yeah, I think so too. I re like, yeah, I'm excited to get it on the table. See, like, like I said, see how it does. Uh, how, what do you think about Ozil versus Ramadi in this list? Yeah, I think it's an interesting conversation. I, I like it from the standpoint you you talked about of freeing up your dials. Let's the ISD two activate squads where it needs to. Let's any of your ships con fire or repair as needed and still jump out of there. I think the ability to slow roll as you need to and then go to speed two or three whether or not you've got um, a nav command, uh, I think will be really big in avoiding losing your large ships. Um, and I, I think Ozil, he's getting more popular, but I still continue to believe he's very underrated. So I like him here. All right. You're the only one that's going to be doing predictions on this one. I'm not going to... Yes, we are not predicting not our own anything. pods. Yep. Um, I've got you going through, and I've got Sky Cake going through. Um, oh, what kind of you? Yes, thank you. Uh, Skycake is another one of my good friends in the scene. Uh, we had a great time at Adepticon, and I think that he has a lot of CIS experience, particularly with this muni build here. Um, he's got the PDX on it this time. He's run it with uh, highs in the past, um, but I think that it's very balanced. It doesn't really struggle a whole lot against any of the other lists in the pod, and it's just a lot of firepower. Um, I mean, the double muni is very solid. The hard sell... Um, is going to be throwing out a decent amount of damage, and then Pat's Fist is Pat's Fist. So uh, those are my two that I'm predicting going through from this pod. On to uh, 
uh, Pod Corruptor. This is um, angry Ewok busting out a, uh, a list no one's ever seen before from him. The uh, Admiral Akbar with double CR90, double transport, and some squads. We've got Big Papa Palpatine, running Palpatine, uh, with an Onager Glad Gazanti and a pretty nasty squad ball. We've got John running. Um, the, we've already seen kind of a version of this, four Peltas and a Venator, but this one is with Luminara. And then uh, M. Muster with uh, Martuk on Star Frigate, Recusant, another Star Frigate, and a Transport. Um, I want to touch on this Luminara list first. In, the, in a very early pod, we talked about this list with Obi-Wan. I, from having played against it, not, not John, but in a, my local scene, almost this exact list... I think that it's it's very, very good, uh, particularly against squads, because you can expert shield text cancel damage and then evade the next shot that comes in and bring back your redirect for expert shield text. Um, there are not you know a huge amount of squads. This is not a very offensive squad ball from Ewok. It's really going to be big against a big pop of Palpatine, although he's got a lot of double, double dice uh, squads, which it won't be quite as good against. And then no squads here. So for as solid of a list as I think it is, it doesn't get to do its main trick a whole lot in this particular pod. Yeah, I agree. It uh, it's it's a good all arounder because those projection experts are going to be able to pass shields to whoever is getting punched in the face, which is going to make it really hard on that vendor, mm-hmm. uh, especially if it because I, I imagine it's the tip of the spear. Yeah. Um, diving in. Saying, hey, if you want 114 points, shoot me. And then all of the Peltas are like, hey, here's mm-hmm. all of his shields back. Um, I really like Papa Pal- Palpatine's list. Um, I think it's going to be it's going to be interesting, especially with the IO uh, Demolisher being able to um, go in and just kind of strip strip defense tokens. Uh, Ewok's list has been. Not exactly that, but close enough to that for the longest time that uh, he's just going to fly it with precision. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then, man, Martuk, I really like Martuk with uh, Muni's ability to double arc and, in theory, have two free dice. Uh, Especially starting out, it's going to be really, really good. Um, Interesting that he went with engine techs on the flagship and then AST on the non-flagship. Um... That'll be that'll be interesting to see how that that bears out. But um, similar to Skycake's list, the the two LTTs with red dice are going to make it pretty easy to focus down like one squad a turn, so to speak. Yep. Um, and that can that can allow him to basically run away if his opponents aren't careful and don't approach correctly, um, and just kind of play the kiting game and you know get away. Um, oh, B2 Rocket Troopers uh, I, on the, the Reiki Zone. I really like that. Um, it's something that I've experimented with. Um, not so much with Pat's Fist. I've done it with the Gunnery Team's Reiki Zone, but um, I really, really like it. I really like its ability to close, hit really hard, and then put that raid on you know a squad carrier or somebody that really needs to nab and now they can't. Um, being able to control a little bit of your opponent's command stack can go a long way. And so that's, that's got, got um, some potential. Mm -hmm. I agree. But uh, my predictions, I, I had the misfortune of playing Ewok last year, in the Vassal world cup. So I know how good this list is. The squad ball has changed a bit, but um, he's got the eight squads with the objective control from the VCXs and he's flown those five ships for forever. So he's going to fly them pretty much perfect in most games. I feel like, um, so I'm going with Ewok as one of mine. The other spot I think is totally up in the air. Um, out of the three remaining lists, I think John's is the strongest in theory, but its strength, I feel like its strength is not super well exemplified in this particular pod and um, could get worn down by some of these other lists. Uh, as much as I want to give my nod to Palpatine, um, I really hope this does well because I want to see Palpatine more on the table and I love Imperial Rogues. I do have to give my second spot to the Martuk list. I think it's just too consistent and too well-balanced uh, against the rest of these people in the pod. Yeah, I think if uh, if there were more squads in the pod, um, 
Martuk would be a little more um, worried. Mm-hmm. But um, Palpatine, man, one, two, four. He's got six squads. Aren't that many squads? You know what? No, I'll go with the top two lists. I think Ewok and Palpatine come out. All right. Um, I, I think there is a chance John goes undefeated uh, 3-0 and and doesn't make it out. He gets the 18, and everybody else beats up enough that he doesn't make it out. I don't know if that's actually mathematically possible, but it, that list is going to struggle hard to win big. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'll go with Pal- Papa Palps and uh, Ewok. We'll see. We'll see how they do. All righty. Next up, we've got uh, Independence Pods, another EU pod. We've got Green Knight with an SSD Onager, but he added in a Gazanti, so a little more unique there. We've got uh, Slippy Backy here with uh, Riken with an Assault Frigate. I think this is the... I guess Ewok had an Assault Frigate too, so the second Assault Frigate we've seen um, with a very annoying set of ships and squads. We've got uh, Walker here with... Um, Jerry on the Ven 2, a Gladiator, some squads, a couple Gazantes, and then MRKS, uh, Mercs, I don't know, uh, with Kraken, uh, with uh, five ships and some Tri Fighters. Um, I, I want to start off by talking about Green Knight's list here. Um, he has gone a different direction than the other SSD Onager lists we've seen so far. He's got Jerry instead of Armadi, a lighter Onager, getting a third ship in there. And going for a a salvo build on the uh, SSD, what do you make of that? Um, I really like it. Uh, I think I think he's he's probably going to have not a, a great time because like those hammerheads in the assault frigate are going to be pain in his backside. But if he just repairs every turn, he'll always have Reva to get stuff back, and he can. Uh, local fire control, you know, salvo at stuff that he needs to and then shoot at the other stuff that he needs to. Like, it's it's going to be good. I really like it. Um, three activations. How do I feel about that? I think I like it. But, yeah. The, the Onager is going to be the weak point. If you can get around the SSD and get to the Onager, like uh, Slippy Backy with their... Or Sippy Backy, excuse me. With their squads... Um, you could probably get the bring the onager down and then just kind of scoot away. But um, yeah, that SSD, I really like it. It's kind of lean, but you also still don't want to shoot it, but it still shoots well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. I think um, this is one of the more interesting ships we've seen thus far. Assault frigate without Akbar, but with Kaken and Sholin and enhanced armament. That that to me is interesting. You're still going for the big side arc shot but you don't have the extra Akbar punch there. Um, it's very expensive as far as assault frigates go, 134. Uh, but it does have the ECMs, so it's decently tanky. Um, th- this, to me, out of the whole group, is the biggest wild card. Um, it's got a decent squad ball, a decent ship threats um, from its various things. It's got the five acts, so and it's Riken. So this, to me, is um, just totally a toss-up of how well it's going to do. I think that uh, this list right here, I love this Venator build uh, that uh, Walker has here with Jerry. Um, that's pretty much exactly how I would, that is exactly how I build Venators, the Imperial Venators. Um, this to me is very interesting, putting Insidious on the Glad one instead of Demolisher. I can see he doesn't have the points for it, um, but I, I may have tried to find the points to get Demo on there, because Insidious doesn't really get to use its ability a whole lot. Insidious is a really great hurting ship. Um, it always has been. The The threat of like, oh no, I'm getting APT'd at medium makes people want to activate stuff out of order. Um, that uh, pressure, that threat range can really help with the forks uh, going in with that Venator. So uh, <laughs> kudos to you, Walker, for getting Insidious in there because uh, I like it. Yeah, I think it also in a weird way, it gets around a lot of the 1.5 stuff that makes APTs and Black Dice Secrets not great. You get around, like the the um, Evade is the same as it's going to be at close range, which is not too bad, and then you get around PDICs, which is not nothing. I don't know that there's any of them 
in this particular pod, but it's an interesting consideration. Agreed. Yeah, I'm double checking. Insidious is all of your armor. Okay. I was making sure Insidious wasn't like your front hull armament. Black dice can be used. It's all of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I like it. Yep. Uh, for my predictions here, I've got um, Walker as one of them making it through. As long as he can get there with his stuff, he should hit pretty hard. And it's a decent squad ball. And then um, it's... I, I will go with Green Knight because I know Green Knight's a very talented player. I just think the SSD could struggle in certain spots. Uh, like you said, the Onager may be giving up 107 points every single game. And so that, that remains to be seen if that's too much to overcome or if he's just super good at flying it and hiding it and keeping it safe. But uh, I'll go with Green Knight and Walker as my two. Um, so quick look. I think I go with uh, Sippy Backy, the Reckon List, mm -hmm. and Walker uh, as the two coming out. I think Green Knight's SSD, for uh, as much as I really, really like it, I think it's going to struggle with having one, two, three, four ships out of Sippy Backy's list that can shoot at it, one, uh, two ships out of Walker's with all of those squads following up, and then one, two, three, four ships out of the Kraken List. Um, I think they'll be able to burn through. Um, burn through the tokens quickly enough and um, that that local fire control can can overheat real quick. Mm. Um, yeah, because I, I think that means then Green Knight's easiest counter, not necessarily the best, but the easiest counter is for that, that SSD to just keep repairing the entire time and that makes it a little harder to swing that front end around exactly how you want it if you're not having. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry helps, but sometimes be able to get that second click at the second joint can really put you in the perfect position. Sure. Um, yeah, I think Sippy, Becky, and Walker are probably going to come out. I, I really like Walker's squad ball. Mm -hmm. Yep, as do I. Alrighty. We've got uh, Phoenix Home next with Fuerix, um, with a Venator 2, Lumi, uh, Consular Acclimator, and some squads. Spec Cray with... Uh, a freedom bot, Providence, and two recusants. He has run the bones of this many, many times. So I've played against it a couple times. We've got Sam, fresh off of his World Cup win last year, running something totally different. Um, Akbar MC30s, five acts with a squad screen. And then we've got It's Steve with a Starhawk 1, a, an Agate on a Providence, a Pelta Assault, and a GR75. Um, initial thoughts from you. Uh, we'll start with Steve at the bottom here, because mm -hmm. that, that Starhawk is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, does Amity, is Amity the one that gives you a salvo token? I can't ever remember. Yeah, let me see. You have to go here. back and look. You, you keep talking, it, I'll look it up. If it gives the, the extra salvo token, I really like it. Because, um, like, the, the obvious, like, it's the obvious thing to go after in that list. Um, it does. Uh, give you, it gives an evade, not the salvo. Gives an evade. Okay. Um, yeah, because it's the obvious thing to go after in that list. You're going to get bang for your buck, 164 points for taking down that one ship. And if you position right, um, you can kind of keep that one ship obstructing all of their other ships as they approach you. Um, but that said, like the Providence and the Starhawk back to back, or they can hit hard. Uh, mm -hmm. and that Providence with engine techs is going to be able to get really wherever it wants. So, um, and it just fire firepower is always good on that Delta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the, that's my first impression. Like that, that list intrigues me. I'm really, really interested to see how they fly. Yeah. I've never seen a Starhawk run like that. Like without agate, relatively bare bones. Um, I'm interested to see how it does. I think, um, Sam stood out to me. I, I have been running MC30s with Akbar in my uh, local area for a little while now. I think they're very, very good. I think they kind of feel bad when your red dice poop out on you because you don't have amazing ways to fix those. But he did take the LTTs with them. So I like this a lot. He's got a very balanced fleet. He's got three hard-hitting ships. He's got slicer tools on Bright Hope. And he's got uh, a six-squad screen, which is three deployments and... I mean, those three squads, that's a decent... Or those six squads, that's a decent little screen to keep stuff off of him long enough for those MC-30s to go to work. 
Yeah, agreed. Uh, and you got to kill all of them in order to get 60 points. So if he can kite with all of his ships, even if you kill all of his squads, or close to all of his squads, Tycho can run pretty quickly and easily out of anything and keep you from getting that 7-4 that if yeah. for some reason his red dice aren't rolling. But yeah, the, the 230 scouts with the Corvette A have been around for a while with Akbar, and it's, it's really good. I will say, though, that Sam is a big... Uh, he, he hates playing against people who run away, and he hates running away himself and, like, skirting along the edge. So he has said, and I don't doubt, that he will be going in with these ships. So it may be some games where it may be better in just terms of trying to win for him to toilet bowl a little bit or to play a little more cagey. But I think I think he's just going to get in there and roll some dice. So I think all of his games should be fun to watch. Um, and, of course, I'm partial to Forex's Lunara list. It's very similar to something ran at GSG. Mm-hmm. Percy Mission has a special place in my heart. Yes. Yep. It's, it's almost the same. A few things are different, but almost the same as what you ran. Um, I also, I, I think this is a, a decent proponent for one of the harder groups uh, to call. Um, I think Spec Cray's list here is uh, very hard to, it, it's kind of feast or famine. If those Rexidents get to hit, and if that Providence gets in range, he could table people. Equally, those Rexidents are both very, very squishy. So, uh, tough to call there. But my, uh, my votes for this particular group are uh, Sam, because I love the list and I know how stinking good he is at this game. And the second one, I think, is totally a toss-up, but I will go with Specre. I've played against him a few times. Um, he has beaten me before, so maybe that factors into my decision. But uh, I know that he knows how to fly this list. So um, I, that, those are my two I'm going to go with. Um, definitely going to go with Sam. I, I don't see him losing big to anything. Mm-hmm. Everything's so compartmentalized, and like MC30s are able to run away at speed four. Same with Corvette. We talked about the squads. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, spec rate. Like, if he comes out of the pot, it's going to be because APTs happened at the right times with the right stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, that combined with the B2 rocket troopers being able to basically shut down Forex's squads, mm-hmm. it's going to be super helpful. Um, yeah, Forex is missing out on one more thing of squad uh, squad token generation. Uh-huh. Um, if they had that, i go with them for sure, but since they don't, I think i go with Spec Ray and with Sam, and yeah. And I will be very, very happy and surprised if Steve makes it out. Like, this, this list brings me joy. I really like it. Mm-hmm. Very unique, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, we've got Amity. We have my mortal enemy, Res Proteus, at the top here running uh, Kraken MSU with a mess of squads. Uh, we've got Paul running Victory Jank, now with squads. Um, similar to what he was running last year, but he's changed up some stuff. Um, Real Neil running Akbar MSU with an Assault Frigate MC30, some CR90s, and a, a Shara Tycho screen. And then Reem running Double Venator with uh, Bale. I think it's the first bail we've seen. Double Venator, double Pelta. Um, I think immediately what stands out is Paul changing it up a little bit. Still running roughly similar bones to what he has been doing. Still with that crazy thick uh, Victory 2 that he flies so well. But this time, um, Jonas, which I love. Darth Vader Defender, which is fantastic. And then two Aggressor Assault Fighters, which I wish were just a point cheaper and they'd be seen more. So I'm interested to see how much use he gets out of them in this particular list. Yeah, uh, um, I'm a big fan of the aggressors, and I'm I'm with you. If they two of them was thirty points, I think you'd see pairs of them more. Mm-hmm. They're just not quite as efficient as the the twenty four hundred on the rebel side. Um, the uh, real Neil's list. Um, I feel like I've seen something super similar to this at the top of Gen Con and. Um, Oh, the French tournament and um, the East Coast tournament. Why is my brain... Nova? Circuiting? Yeah, Nova. Um, it seems like it's going to be really good. The only difference being uh, that Easter fleet is the one I'm thinking of um, has more of a bid than this. This is only a one-point bid. I don't feel like 
I feel like the Easter Fleet had more of a bid than that. Yeah, so the Easter Fleet has a very significant bid. It's more than yeah. 10, and it's a bunch of CR-90s instead of the Assault Frigate. Right. Okay. Yeah. I um, I also think, you know, as much as I like to joke, you know, Rasputis is such a good player, and he's very good at running Rebel MSU. Um, he's better at running Rebel MSU than anyone else I've ever played against, and his squad ball is very annoying and very well balanced. All of these ships can engage on their own terms, so I don't see a world in which he loses any more than 6-5. Um, just too easy to keep stuff alive and too easy to nab a few things on the way out. Um, he's got no bid, so he's going to be at the mercy of pretty much everyone else, um, but I don't think there should be too much of a problem. He doesn't really mind going first or second. I think in terms of player talent, this is one of the candidates for Pot of Death. Um, I, all of these players are good. I think um, Reem is kind of the sleeper in this group, in my opinion. Um, I don't. I don't know that. I think the list is super solid. He does have a boarding troopers Ven one, which I think is very cool. Boarding troopers really is all the rage right now. Um, but I, I know Reem is a very very good player that I think some people might overlook, and so I. I think this this group could go any number of ways. I think the only, in my mind, surefire thing that's coming out of this is that as long as Rasproteus tries and flies well, I think he's coming out for sure. Yeah, I, I think I agree. Uh, his mortal enemy is Gunnery Teams, and Paul, Paul brought Gunnery Team. So yeah. we'll see we'll see if um, that ends up hurting or not. Yeah, that Vic Gunnery Team decaps is going to be a big no-no zone for Rasproteus' ships. Yeah, I think um, that game's going to be a chess match for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. So I think I'd probably go with uh, Rasproteus and Paul would be my, my two picks, but I would also not be surprised if Neil and or Reem make it out. I think it's a great pod to watch. Agreed. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Paul and Real Neil. Okay. Only because Real Neil has that one point bid. Mm -hmm. uh, and I... I see lots of really bad objectives for everybody else coming like coming with this list. And having that bid on two of the three lists is going to be really, really good. Yep. Uh, and I like how his list plays into the two Venators. So, um, yeah, I'll go with Real Neil and uh, Paul out of this, because I think Paul's gunnery teams eat up Ras Proteus enough that it'll be the difference. All righty. We've got Dominator next, another European pod. We've got uh, B2W, I think it's beginner to winner, running Akbar on Assault uh, Cruiser, very classic Akbar list here with some CR90s. We've got Garrett running uh, Riken, Riken MSU with a whole lot of squads. Defender 2552 with uh, Ramadi, peeping that uh, Assault Gazanti up there, very cool. And then Plusjin running... Um, Peltas with Yalaren. This is the second iteration of this that we've seen thus far of Yalaren with quad Peltas and 134 squads. I think this is almost the same. It's similar almost the same to the previous version of this and I think it has the same problem that I brought up. Um, granted, I think this is a better pod for it because you don't have super heavy squads. You've just got Garrett with super heavy squads. The other two matchups not getting a full Yalaran Alpha is not going to matter as much, so those arcs are going to pop off. Yeah, I agree. Um, I really like Plusjin's list in, in in this pot, like you said. It's going to be able to, let's see, there's 66 points for Defender, there's well over 100 for Garrett, and 55 for, um, for B2W, so uh, I think his squads clean up. I, he, if he drops a squad... It, I don't want to say it would be a misplay, but it probably would be. Either that or that B-19 does its job, and it's it's the the sacrificial lamb so that everybody else lives. And mm -hmm. then after that, it's going to be um, how quickly can his arcs burn stuff down. Yeah, uh, He's got Bomber Command Center in there. Um, the Yalaran uh, Pelta has its own boosted comms, so that's going to be really great for him. And Rider coordination team, every single one with Ahsoka is going to just murder people mm -hmm. if you dive in too fast. So, I really like it. Yep. I'm a big fan of that list in this pod as well. Um, I also think, I think Garrett has a very strong list. I think Riken, 
as expensive as he is, is kind of slept on right now, at least in the greater Armada sphere. And uh, this list is just so nasty. Uh, he's got all those uniques in there. He's got enough CR90s to run around and never lose all that big. So I think this is super solid. I also do want to give you know attention to the classic Akbar here. Um, for for as much as it seems like the meta has kind of passed this particular version by with the giant MC80 and some supporting ships, man, if it gets a good shot and he rolls well, that that thing could just start popping stuff. I just so yeah. wish Home One worked on the MC30. I mean the MC80 itself. Yeah, agreed. It. It feels like it should for seven points, but it doesn't. But yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think... Oh, man. I think Garrett probably has the best chance of, of beating Plusgen. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly because it's going to be pretty simple to throw in Ketsu and then Taiko and then Green Squadron and just hold that entire ball down. Yeah. Um, Plusgen's going to have to play like super cagey and super spread out because, uh, like, once it's dead, like, you know, it, any of his squads can die and hold it until the end of the round. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to doesn't have to attack him with him, doesn't have to activate him. He's just got to be able to throw one of his squads in, and he doesn't have any grit uh, to be able to get away. So that could be be a, a chess match in the making with those TRC-90s. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. That brings me to my picks is going to be... I am going to go with those two players. I'm going to be with Plus, Jen, and Garrett. Uh, I think their game is going to be kind of a slog. Um, you have a bunch of ships that don't hit particularly hard against a bunch of squads just engaging in a tar pit for a lot of the game. Um, but I think they both have the best lists and the best matchups out of this particular pod. Yeah, I think I agree. Uh, I really like B2W's list. That reactive gunnery on the MC-80 is just fun. Mm -hmm. Um in text means you can't really run away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, yeah, I think Plushjins and um, Garrett come out of it. Mm -hmm. I think Probably it's, just barely, but yeah. like, it, this is a close pod. I agree. I think it could be a very low-scoring pod and a very close pod. Yeah, we haven't even really touched on that Kuat that's just like, hey, hit me, I want you to hit me, hit me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the solution for a lot of these players, though, is just going to be like, okay, you, you stay over there. We're just going to go kill the Onager or the squads and see about getting a seven. Yeah. Uh, so maybe, maybe just a tough draw there for Defender. Moving on to Nova Defiant, we've got the largest package here, running two ship with 134 squads. Uh, Ozel on the ISD2 with the Gladiator. We've got Armchair Jedi with um, Kirstead Gate on Mon Karen. Uh, two CR90s, two GR75s, and a moderately heavy squad ball. We've got Nick running a very similar list to Max um, with Imp2, Glad, and a Gazanti, so not quite two ship, still one, almost 134. And then we've got Semper Looney running um, Kraken with MC30, two CR90s, and two GR75s with a decent squad ball as well. Right up front, I, I think this is my, my singular pick for Pot of Death. Um, I think it's a really tough draw for, <laughs> for all these players. Um, I don't know how the seeding uh, broke down. Uh, I don't really want to speculate too much on that. But my goodness, this is four really solid players playing solid lists. Yeah, this is going to be going to be a bloodbath. Um, uh, yeah, I don't like any of it. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, Super Looney's list, like Outbound flight, Colin. Uh, he's. I really like this blue dice list. Uh, it's not something most people think about whenever they're, uh, you know, thinking about what are right, man, what counters my thing, and what is, what's it going to do. And they don't think about like Orbit B with Captain Rex and Ion Cannon batteries, and that mm -hmm. thing can just shut down. Uh, squad pusher. It can strip away tokens, like strip away shields if you don't have tokens. Like it's. It's a nasty little ship, and if you combine it with Kraken, it's just that much harder to kill. Um, Lando and Dutch both are gross with Adar Talon, mm -hmm. uh, and that boosted comms means Adar doesn't have to get that close to the fight. So it's going to be... Uh... Man, this is going to be a slugfest. Mm -hmm. I mean, flip a coin on yeah. who gets out. This, is to me, is the hardest group to call. 
I also, you know, Mac can fight me on it all he wants. I don't believe in two ship, but I do believe in Mac. And so I think he will find success in this group despite his list. I know he's changed up a little bit since uh, the TTS tournament. Um, and it, it's solid. Like, he, his squads hit hard. His ISD hits hard. The Gladiator does not hit all that hard. Um, so as long as he doesn't get tabled, which I think most of these lists would probably struggle to table him, he'll be fine. Um, but I, I'm just really not a believer in two ship. And then Nick, you know, similar list, um, less of a, of the issue there with the, the Gazanti, I think is, is nice as a little bit of activation padding and another deployment. Um, but you're right. I think that this, this group could go any number of ways. I, I, I've predicted, um, large package and my, my dark horse, I've also predicted, uh, Colin Looney, but, um, yeah, I would not be surprised to see two of any of these players make it out. Yeah, agreed. Um, I definitely think... I don't... So Max List, having seen it a little bit in action, like just out of the corner of my eye at GSG, we never got to play. It kind of is waiting for your opponent to make a mistake. And I don't really see Nick or Colin making a mistake against it. Yeah. I don't know what that would look like, but... I don't really see him doing it. And so it's going to come down to just like dice rolls. And at that point, I think Max rolling more dice between uh, gunnery team yeah. and quad battery turrets. Um, mm -hmm. Even though Colin has more activations. Um, yeah. Man, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be really interesting. Uh, Colin's H nines are going to be the, uh, the hero of this list or this pod, I think. Um, with the two ISDs taking EWS instead of ECM. Yeah. Uh, same thing with against a gate. Uh, once, once you can get one of the the brace tokens spent, or you know re redirects, whichever happens, uh, you're gonna those ancient names are gonna be clutch because now a gate's gonna just be discarding tokens left and right, and eventually stuff's gonna burn down. Yeah. So I think I go with uh, Colin, and I'm gonna go with Nick. All the right. Two of them out of the list, yeah. also because I see that YV six six six. The devil ship, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna say that makes it out. Yeah, yeah. I think the other thing about Nick's list, which is interesting, is the heavy fire zone on the imp too. So for people who are playing KG against him, he can reach out and touch those squads early while keeping his you know closer to the chest. So yep. like I said, I think it's totally a toss up. Um, so I am excited to see how this group ends up being. Uh, next up, we've got my group. Um, so I'm not gonna make any predictions here. But uh, we've got Caribbean Ninja running Mahdi 4 ship here with a Quasar, two Gazantes, and then 133 in squads. We've got Solo Severity with Agate on an MC30, second MC30, two JR75s, and 125 in squads. We've got Mylis, which I'll go over last, and then Star Wars Master 501 with a, an ISD, a Kuat with a ridiculous amount of dice out the front. Uh, a Gazanti, an Onager Star Destroyer, which I love to see, and uh, six TIE Fighters. Um, my list is, should be familiar to everybody. Uh, this is the 12th iteration of it. Um, changed some things. I've got Gallant Haven on the Assault Frigate, and the big thing being Jan Ors and seven YTs instead of my uh, normal rogue ball of a bunch of aces. MC-30 and the GR-75s are still the same. So I, I won't talk too much about it since it is my pod, and I'm not going to make any predictions, but what are your thoughts? Uh, solo Severity, uh, I really like his list. Um, I really love Mark Madden with Adar Talon. I think it's just the goofiest little thing to be able to just place bombs everywhere mm -hmm. um, and still shoot stuff. Um, the Quasar and Caribbean Ninjas list, I love. Less than 60-point Quasar, yes, all day, every day. Mm -hmm. uh, you can shove it up in there and be like, shoot at me, I dare you, because I don't care. Um, yep. It's, it's pretty great, and those two Gazantes then afterwards can just relay through Jendon to push stuff. Uh, Darth Vader doesn't really care. Um, and that Kuat is me, the Fording Troopers. Um, yeah, I really like it. Uh, this is, like... I don't want to say, like, you're in a pot of death, but, like, this is some, this is some good stuff. Like, this Onager Star Destroyer is going to hit and hit hard. Like, don't let it near your uh, Assault Frigate, because you could take a lot of damage really fast with those um, the blue beam on it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, definitely a, a matchup where I'm going to be considering the double evade with the gate. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think I, I'm I'm happy that it's a it's a very diverse pod. It seems like, and it's not a bunch of super common stuff. I don't know that I would call any of the four lists in this pod, you know, super meta or super uh, common and, and boring. So um, I'm I'm excited for it. I oh, agree. That Kua is not meta whatsoever, and I love it. Yeah. Love Darth Vader. <laughs> that is so, the, so the expanded really nice. Devastator. Like, yeah. Uh, amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really like it. I would have been tempted instead of Reva to go with um, Nita instead, so that you can, you know, approach Onagers and other stuff from long range and keep the damage off of you, but uh, and, you know, that's one more token that you, as soon as you get in close, you just toss it because you need more dice for, for Devastator, yep. more dice for the Dice God. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I still like it. Uh, Reva is going to be awesome at keeping that thing alive as it closes the gap. And Screed is going to make it really hard for um, ships like uh, your Assault Frigate to, you know, throw, a, throw an evade out and be like, okay, reroll those two crit. Oh, there's a third crit there now. Mm-hmm. Okay, now what do I do? Like, is it worth it to throw out that evade and reroll those, or are you just going to keep them in there? Um, yeah, I really like it. Yeah, all of it. Uh, I think coming out of this, since I know you're not doing predictions, mm-hmm. um, I really like Solo's uh, uh, list. I really, really like it. Uh, and then I, I think I'm going with your list as the other one. I'm looking at bids now, trying to do math in my head. Yeah, Star Wars Masters oh, got everyone, and then I've got the second highest bid, and then both the other lists yeah. are at 400. And, and Star Wars Master, I think, wants that to go first. So in that case, I think your objectives went out. So uh, I'm going with Solo and yourself uh, to right. come out of this pod. But um, yeah, Caribbean Ninja is a really good player, and that squad ball is gross. Uh, and then Solo has so much dice he's going to be throwing and Screed to help make it hit and stick really hard. Oh, Solo's got the Agate MC-30s. Yes. Yeah, Star Wars with the Screed. Yep. Yeah, okay. a whole lot of dice. If he gets that thing on target, that thing's going to hit like a truck. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on, we've got the Eclipse group with Aresius running Agate on the Star Cruiser, uh, four ships with a lot of squads, New Gandhi running uh, MSU, Ozil MSU with a decent amount of squads. Poldy Colonia running Tarkin, Imperial Tarkin, which is very cool. Uh, five ships, no squads. And then Dark Raver running the only uh, big boy SSD that we have seen thus far. Yeah. Um, so he has gone in a different direction than everyone else with the SSDs. Yep, yep. Uh, things to note, at least my initial takeaways from that SSD list. Uh, me personally, I would prefer to have a, a second Gazanti with um, repair crews. Mm-hmm. That's just personal preference. Uh, the interceptors with RHDs are going to do a great job of keeping um, squads off of them. And then QLTs and LTT are going to be, be real solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got, um, this is a pain for your squads to try to take down. They're going to be taking a lot of damage in return. I agree with you, though. I'd probably rather drop the Interceptors and the RHDs, grab a second Gazanti with Repair Crews. But I also don't play this list, so I don't know if that's optimal. Got a sizable bid, though, 388. I do believe that is the biggest. I know some of these don't have bids on them. But I do believe he's going to have bid with 388 there. Um, I think so too. Have to talk about Aresius up there as one of the most consistent Vassal World Cup players ever. Um, he hasn't lost a game in two World Cups now or something like that. Something ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and I could easily see that continuing. I, um, th- this is a very, very solid list. That uh, If he makes it out of this pod, that, uh, that MC80 is going to be very annoying for Hawks to deal with and stuff like that. Um, and then it's just yeah, a, such a sum- to deal with. <laughs> yes, yes, such a solid, solid list all the way around. It's also got jamming barrier on one of the GR seventy fives, which is an interesting take. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Uh, I really love Ezra Bridger, just period. So it's cool to see Ezra in the list. And uh, Tia Tia four over Janus Light is something I didn't think I'd ever see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um. Don't want to spend too much time, though, since I know this video is getting long. I'm going with yeah. uh, Aresius for sure. 
And then I am going to go with Dark Raver, just because I think that that SSD can do pretty well into a lot of these lists. I think it does well against Poli Colonia, and I think it does well into New Gandhi's list. So uh, those are my two picks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think so too. I think its its ability to win the matchup against New Gandhi is going to probably uh, what lets Dark Raver get out of the pod. Uh, I would not sleep on Poli because... One, two, three, you know, ships shooting into that SSD can really overheat tokens. Mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't have uh, Reva to, to be getting stuff back to yep. help, help out. Um, and, yeah, uh, Aresius, he's awesome. They're awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what else to say. And that, that squad ball is gross. Mm -hmm. I do not like it. Yep, amen. Moving on to Pod Executor, we've got, um, I can never say his name, R. Dadel, uh, with CR90 Spam, with Kraken, which I think is beautiful. We've got Mako running uh, Recusant, Double Muni, uh, Gazanti, and Six Vultures. We've got Docta running a similar list, uh, Recusant, uh, three hard cells with Freedom Bot and like, some Vultures. And then Perdoop running a lot more CR90s. Uh, looks like uh, Leia with uh, a decent squad ball there. Um, I want to talk about this. A, this group has a strangely large amount of CR90s in it. Uh, I, I love the idea of these six CR90s and then a Slicer Tools uh, GR75. Um, you got two Bs and four As, so you've got the long range damage and the annoying medium with those SW7s. Those are going to be rolling uh, three damage, three or four damage out the front, uh, five or six if you get the double every single time. Uh, so I think that those are so nice and consistent. With Kraken, everything's just that little bit tankier, and you can just... This is another one of those fleets where ram damage could be a viable way to, to kill stuff. Uh, I've got expendable hull here with these cheap CR-90s. I'm just going to keep... If each of them rams you twice, that's that's great value. Yep, and those CR-90Bs with SW7s, uh, assuming a concentrate fire can in a double arc can do three and three mm -hmm. out the front and the side. Uh, and that's just that right annoying amount of damage that, like, I don't really want to brace it. kind of want to brace it. Yeah. Uh, and then you know you're going to be taking TRC shots after that. So, uh, yeah, that's a a fun Kraken list. I really like it. Mm -hmm. Anything else stand out in this pod? Uh, Mako's Hammer and Anvil. I'm pretty sure he's been playing something very similar to this. Two Munis and a Wreck for a long time. Uh, I really like it. Um, the the still first officer muties are solid along with their LTTs backing them up. Mm -hmm. um, Docta's uh, black dice are going to be super duper interesting to see what happens. Uh, he's got a fat hard cell at 100 points. Yep. Uh, and the, the two other hard cells are no slouch either at 71 and 71. If you can take both of them out, you've got your 8-3. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is going to be like the game of haymakers and like I fight. Yeah, it's it's kind of a rough draw for him. He's got two CR ninety spam lists, which are yeah. just like, hey, I see see your black dice coming in, and I cancel them. So yeah. uh, tough, kind of a tough draw there. I think he has a good matchup against Mako as long as he's rolling well. But those other two could really be a problem. Yep. Yeah. That said, uh, the B twos being able to um, either shut down navigates with Kraken while they're running super fast can it can be dicey if you're not paying attention to where you're flying. Corey uh, Ard is really, really good with the CR90, so I don't expect him to fall into that, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that that clutch raid with the B2 Rocket Troopers uh, may help net dock to some points, and I think he's got bid on everybody at 393. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So Getting to play his objectives is going to really, really help him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my predictions here, I'm going with uh, Corey, with Ard, and then the second one I think is totally a toss-up. I think this pod could go very badly for Docta, and equally I can also see him making it out. So yep. I I'll go with uh, him tentatively, but I don't know. I'm going with him based on that bid and him being able to choose, like, okay, I know, you know, I don't know what his objectives are, but... I know my objectives play well into uh, this Leia list, but they don't play well into Mako's 
two wrecks and two munis. Um, and being able to choose between first and second are gonna it's gonna really really help mm-hmm. help him. So I'll go with Thakta, and then uh, I'll go with Corey just for the sheer number like of dice. He's just gonna be yeah. throwing so many dice. Yep, I agree. All right, wrap, getting close to the end here. We've got uh, Sovereign. GM Thrawn running an Interdictor, Gladiator, and two Gazantes with a decent squad ball. Admiral J with an ISD-2, uh, Quasar, Gazanti, and another decent squad ball. JJ's Juggernaut, um, multiple-time champion, I believe, of Vassal World Cup, running Recusant, Muni, Hard Cell, Hard Cell squads uh, with, who's he wrote, got that with, Martuk. And then Graham Moff, Voucher, uh, Sloan, uh, kind of an MSU Sloan. Two Arcatons, Quasar, two Gazantes, and one seventeen in squads. Um, I think right off the top, something that I noticed right away is we have an interdictor list with no bid. Um, and a glad two with Demolisher and Callus and Ruthless. That, I think, has probably been my biggest white whale, is trying to get the glad two uh, flagship working. I just can't quite get it to do what I want it to do, so maybe uh, GM Thrawn has figured that out. But I, I think taking the interdictor with no bid is interesting. Uh, like I wonder what his objectives are, or if he's going to really try to mess with his opponent's objectives. Normally, it seems like the interdictors that have had success in recent times have had decent bids to go second. I think his bid here is the title Demolisher. Um, giving Demolisher first is kind of scary. It's not yeah. as scary as it used to be, but... Um, I mean, that combined with grab ship reroute can really make it hard on your opponent. Um, especially if they've got something like, um, oh, mining facility or doom station. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can pull or contested outpost, if you can pull that stuff away, or if they know they've got it in their, you know, in their suite of objectives, now all of a sudden maybe they give him second and. Thrawn then gets to play to his objectives. I, I, I kind of like it as a zero-bid list. Um, yeah, and decaps on the Interdictor is always solid. Mm-hmm. Those, those two little four dice shooting out there. I really like it. Yep. What else stands out about the pod? Um, JJ's list, I really like. Um, he's going to be throwing lots and lots and lots of dice, mm-hmm. and I'm a fan. Uh, uh, the trap fighters coming back with RHDs three times is going to be hard to hard to deal with for um, the Sloan squads, especially since they don't really have they don't really have tokens for you to be spending away. So it's kind of like, mm, dang, I'm just going to eat this counter too, and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I like uh, the the MSU Sloan Centicore with LTT. Uh, it's a little bit of a wrinkle compared to. Um, some of the other MSU Sloans, the German Sloans, etc. Centicore has always been there, but LTT as like this additional wrinkle of okay, if you dive in and you choose to shoot at this thing to try and kill my relay, I've got a little bit I can punch back at you with my black dice plus plus two dice. Um, mm-hmm. Man, this is gonna be tough. Uh, the MSU Sloan has bid on everybody. I think it's the only one with bid, right? Everybody else is at four hundred. Uh huh. Um, You're correct. Yeah. So I think I pick Voucher to come out, and then it's hard to go against JJ. He's such a solid player. Yeah, I think the experience of, of so many World Cups and winning them, I think, is makes me think JJ as well. Um, yep. So I'm going, I'm going JJ, and I'm going Voucher as well. Although I think that um, uh, I do like um, what you were talking about with if Thrawn can, you know, if the objectives shake out. And, Stuff and things work out. I think this is a sleeper pick there. Uh, mm-hmm. Second to last here, we've got the triumphing group with Neb B running Riken CR90 spam with 134 in squads. We've got Bantha running uh, Kraken on an assault frigate uh, with four ships and a light squad screen, including four E wings. Um, we've got Ty, Ty Venranta. I That's a tough one. Um, running Imperial Ven with Mahdi, ISD2, two Xantis, and Sienna Valen. And then 187 Leon running um, Dodonna MSU here with a whole lot of bombers. Um, 
Something that immediately stands out to me, I look at Bantha's list here, I look at the E-Wings, I see the Assault Frigate, and I just think to myself, why is Gallant Haven not in this list? To me, that is a huge strength of E-Wings, is to be able to snipe out of Gallant Haven range. Um, you, you sit back, touching your ship, or even on the sides of the ship, to where your opponent really has to come close to do anything, and you're in Gallant Haven range, and you snipe out of there, I think is such a... If you're going to take E-Wings, that seems like a no-brainer to me. But, by that same token, it seems like he's going to be playing fast and loose because of running Kraken, so keeping that Assault Frigate yep. Speed 3 running around. So maybe harder to get Gallant Haven to work as well there. Yep, yep. That was going to be my note with uh, with Kraken. I don't think Gallant Haven's going to be as uh, reliably placed mm-hmm. for the E-Wings. Uh Personally, I would have swapped the Y wings for A wings. Um, yep. They pair well, well with E wings, in my experience. But I mean, that's just personal preference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Ned B's list is pretty gross. Riken with all these these squads in the CR nineties. It's something we've yep. seen before. So I think that yep. that's super solid. And I think that uh, Leon's list is also really really solid. Um, Dodonna is an interesting choice with this, but he's got the Dodonna's Pride on there. He's got the APTs. He's got all those bombers. If he can get Dodonna to go off a few times, then that could uh, really change the outcome of this group. Agreed. And Nora Wexley in there to uh, make the bombers hit a little bit harder while like, when they need to to get their shields down is mm-hmm. going to be clutch for him to, to chew through. Yep. Yeah, I like everybody in this pod. Yeah, I think this is another one that's very hard to call. I think I probably spent the longest trying to think about who I would take in this pod. I ended up going with Neb B and Leon. Uh, I think I'm just partial to those lists that can dance around as they need to and have the squads to do their thing. Uh, but I think this this is a pretty much a toss-up group, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think if you're making me pick, i pick those two, Neb B and Leon. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you told me uh, Bantha and uh, how did you say this? Tyvantra? I think, yeah, I think that's how it is. Yeah, type uh, If you told me those two came out, I wouldn't be surprised because, like, that Venator ISD2 is going to be two giant haymakers. Uh, and hurting bulkheads means that that ISD2 can run into just about anybody else and care. Yeah, mm-hmm. anybody else in any other list and care. So um, it'll be really, really interesting to see how they work overload pulse into the that's, that's what I was thinking as well. Um, if they can get double arcs on people and, you know, shoot from the side and then shoot from the front, that could, that could really, really hurt really, really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think Leon and Ned B probably come out, but this is going to be a fun group to watch. Yep. And then finally, our last group here, Lucid Voice. We've got Kalorn on uh, a very similar list that he ran down in Texas. Um, Agate on the Star Cruiser, CR-90, 2 gf 75s and some squads. Got Sackett-26 on um, Republic here with Lumi, a uh, five-ship. We've got Unskilled First Officer with Bale, uh, with three-ship and a bunch of squads. And then in Rob We Trust, running Starhawk MC-80, no squads, with a sizable bid. Uh, I think this is another very, very interesting list, um, and another candidate for Pot of Death. Uh, these are all good players. I know all these players. They're all very talented. Um, I think that uh, unskilled first officers is kind of going to have a heyday <laughs> with his with his bombers as long as he does okay against Kalorn's squads. Um, I think that his squads are just going to. I think unskilled first officer squads are just going to go crazy. Ten squads. We've talked about it already. That's a lot of deployment advantage. Yeah, I agree. Emperor Submission sitting in there to uh, make up make up the the ground that his ships leave behind because they keep punches hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Plus I, the I ruthless, he, plus the ord pods and LTTs. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be a race for him to uh, to get rid of the the other player squads. Although like, he's got two squadless players he's going against, so like it'll be a race for him to get rid of Lando. I know the, the squads in Kellorn's list, and then everybody else is going to be uh, a very cagey um, game to try and not just dive into that ball 
Mm -hmm. uh, I think thermal shields probably helps them a lot against Kellorn's Star Cruiser, um, and the, the ten squads are going to help keep that Pelta just kind of tucked in back behind everything, uh, and then Bale uh, allows for you, you do not have to have Clone Captain Silver on the vendor to make make everything work. So mm -hmm. yeah, I really like it. Yep. No, I think this is a very competitive group. I'm interested to see how it shakes out. Um, I've got Kalorn and Unskilled Officer going through. I think Unskilled Officer is one of the best players that no one really talks about. Um, he he is he's won tournaments. He's consistently placed well. I think his list is super solid. So I think he is a lock for getting out of here. And then I'm going to go with Kalorn just because he's got a good matchup against uh, the Starhawk list where he can get an 8-3, which I think is going to be important to get out. Um, I think that uh, Sackett could kind of struggle to kill either of these ships and win in any significant margin, and that may be hard. And by the same token, I think that there are two lists here that can kill one of Rob's ships here and get 8-3s. So for that reason, going with Unskilled First Officer and Kalorn. Yeah, I think I agree. Um, Sackett's damage uh, mitigation is going to be interesting. With two Peltas being able to pass around shields and Implacable being able to help the Venator tank a little bit here and there is going to be um, going to be really key. And uh, if, I mean, if you don't lose anything, he's also got Mercy Mission, there's 40 points. So, like, um, you know, you look at the squad players and all he has to do is kill two Y-Wings or kill, uh, you know, a 24, two 2400s, and with that 40 points, you get the 7-4. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's easier said than done. I'm not trying to say, like, it's you know, a walk in the park, but it's not the hardest thing in the world. Uh, and if people don't roll quite hot enough, it might not work out. Yep, yep. Alrighty, then. Uh, that wraps up. Our pod predictions, for those of you who stuck with us, I appreciate it. This was a very long video, but um, this is such an exciting time, uh, such a great time to be an Armada player. Whether you're playing in the tournament or watching it, uh, it's such a good event. So thank you, Michael, for joining me on this. Uh, any final thoughts before we end it off? No. Uh, I'm really, really excited, really uh, excited to get into the pods and start playing my opponents. I know I played Skykick last year in uh, Pod Garm. And I'm cheering for my fellow Garmites who uh, are out in different pods this year. But uh, and Vassal World Cup always brings out the most interesting lists. And I, I don't think we read any clunkers tonight. Like, yeah. all of them look really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very high-quality lists from everybody. Uh, but that's going to do it for tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, look forward to more Vassal World Cup content as the games begin. And we'll go from there. Have a good one.